Welcome to the ship room. You're on the air. Sixty percent of the American workforce wears jeans to work at least four days a week. The other forty percent are probably lifeguards or astronauts. That means everyone else in the world is acquainted with my guest company. Please welcome the CIO of the Gap, Sally Gilligan. <laughs> Sally, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's great to join you. You've done a ton of work really focusing on modernizing the way everyone at Gap works. When you started, what did that end goal look like? We really wanted to first start with our workforce and think about how do we make sure that we're giving them those opportunities so that really it's a place where when you come to work, you're working with the most current technology and you're growing your skills and you're growing your career. Yeah, about a year ago, you um, kind of completed the migration to Office 365. What were the goals that you had and have, you, have the goals been accomplished? We were very lucky. We did a pretty significant migration. First and foremost, we wanted to make sure that our global workforces were on the same basis of collaboration tools. Um, that in itself is incredibly empowering when you're trying to exchange information and you know work together. The other piece that we really liked about O365 was just, for me selfishly, the amount of security that's built in with that, particularly when we operate in the number of countries we operate globally. Yeah. But when we looked at our workforce too, what was really attractive is the number of features that are integrated. So having a collaboration platform like Teams, being able to use what's built in and really hearing back from folks that really made my life more seamless, whether that's how they're using OneDrive, whether that's, you know, how they're able to share documents versus in the past that would have been three or four different applications that they were opening up. All right, check this out. <laughs> Welcome to the ship room. You're here with uh, Sally Gilligan. Who's on the phone? What's up, guys? So, I have a history report for my school, and I had a question for Sally. So, I saw this documentary about these two friends who are also working on a history report, and they travel through time with a, a, a phone booth and pick up famous people. Are you talking, you're Bill, this Bill and Ted's- No, I think you're mistaken. This was a documentary. Well, I want to do the same thing for my part, except I want the people to look nice on stage. So I need Sally to help me pick out some clothes from The Gap. Absolutely. I call this little exercise card things, khakis, or denim jacket. I'll say the name of a historical figure, and you tell me what you think they should wear. Okay. <laughs> Happy to. First up, Socrates. <laughs> I think he's a cardigan guy. Joan of Arc. Denim, definitely. Abraham Lincoln. Oh, that's a tough one, but I'm gonna have to go again with cardigan. Next up, Genghis Khan. <laughs> Ooh. I think the blazer. It does a lot for him. How about Napoleon? Oh, the denim jacket is, is, it, that's quite cutting edge. That's right. Beethoven. Oh, nice. I'm gonna have to go with the khakis with Beethoven. One last question for the essay section of my report. An important part of an IT organization's success is effective communication. How do you communicate up the chain about the success your team is having? Well, I think a big portion of how you communicate is also starts with what value are you creating for your customer and how are you helping to drive the business? Because it shouldn't be what is IT doing, it should be at the end of the day we work collaboratively across our leadership team with how do we keep building the best experience for our customer and delivering the best product to them. And technology is one component that enables that and so making sure that I'm in lockstep with my partners on how we do that, what's prioritized, and then being able to measure that and communicate that is really what's key to it. So tell me about your adoption of Teams. You're, you're describing it to me and, and it, it's very interesting. We did a rollout with our teams and just sort of introducing it. And I think it's such an intuitive tool that we actually really didn't have to do a lot of training and adoption. Mm -hmm. We offered it, um, but what we found as long as people started to work within it and how well it integrates with some of the other office yeah. products that we use, that it's become natural for how we work collaboratively. We do a lot of cross-functional work. It takes a lot to bring the best experience to our customers and enabling those cross-functional teams on a single platform. I think they themselves intuitively 
um, welcome the adoption. Do you feel like you're more secure using Office 365 than you were before? Yes, just the fact we're running on your cloud and the level of security and investment that Microsoft has made around that um, is tenfold what someone of my, my size company can do. What trends were you seeing that you thought this was the right time for you to do this for your employees and for your stores? You just look at how we all live our lives. The amount of technology that's been democratized and open and how much of it's open source, this was the right time for our company to move. We had looked at where we were from a legacy perspective and where we wanted to go and knowing where we want to go with our customer and how we want to keep innovating and bringing experiences for our customer. The amount of things that we get excited about requires a different speed to market and a different ability to react and that wasn't going to be possible with traditional technology. <laughs> Okay, so in 2011, the word jeggings was added to the Oxford Dictionary, <laughs> in part because I think it helped gap create this international <laughs> phenomena. Every year, there's new ads that are, there are new words that are added to the dictionary, and there's some that are rejected. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you a list of a few words. See if you can tell me if it was accepted or rejected. Rando. I say rejected. Spatulate. I'm gonna go accepted, because I actually really like that one. Oh, I do too. <laughs> Fabulosity. I'm gonna say rejected. Hangry. Accepted. Fergal. I'm gonna reject this that one. That was rejected. Adorbs. I'm gonna go with accepted. Now I've heard leaders of the Gap um, talk about the number one thing they want from technology is to simplify the way that people work and how they work okay. together specifically so they can focus on the business and not have the tech get in the way. What were you looking for specifically with teams? There's always a need to move information and how you exchange information. Mm -hmm. And it also just needs to work wherever someone is. And so first and foremost, what we were looking for is a stable platform that people can rely on and works from wherever and whenever they need it. And then also the ability to exchange information without replicating it again and again across yeah. the organization and the ability to go find it when you need it, right? So one of the biggest challenges, if you think about technology five years ago, is even if you did share files, who had the most recent version of it? Or I had a hard copy, I didn't have a soft copy. Those conversations should go away in this day and age. Sure. It sounds so basic, yeah. um, but it's a huge unlock. <laughs> Now, I know one thing that you're really passionate about uh, is increasing the diversity and inclusion in the workplace. It's something I spend a lot of my time on as well. How have you seen changes in businesses as more priority and, and progress is being made? I am really spoiled with being at Gap Inc. Um, it's something and a value that we take very seriously. And I think a lot of it starts with awareness. And I think that's a big change I've seen is most managers of others are well-intended. And how do you educate people? Because you may not even be aware of your own biases or how you approach your hiring or how you approach your, even your coaching, your even your feedback, yeah, in how you're listening. And so we do a lot around awareness um, in educating our leaders and managers of others in our full workforce. But then that's not enough just to have awareness. Then you actually have to start to say, well, how does that show up? So what does that look like in our promotion? What does that look like in creating the opportunities for people to be heard um, and making sure also when you look at where are you seeking your candidates from, that you really are very open to. Open the pipeline. Yeah, and I think when you think about, at the end of the day, the best innovation and the best ideas come from a diverse set of minds. Yep. And that diverse set of minds is not gonna come from a group of people that have all shared the same experience. We build product yep. for the world. We better have the world represented in our, in our teams. That's your customer at the end of the day. Yeah, that's and exactly it. To assume that you can know what they want if you don't have them represented in your thought process um, is just a miss. While we've been talking, we have the, what we call the ship room chat bot. It's been listening to the conversation, <laughs> analyzing the conversation, you know, using the world's best AI. And it's come up with a dozen questions <laughs> that most represents our conversation. But to make things a little more challenging, oh, we have some Gap shirts. We're gonna fold shirts while we go nice. through, the, through, the, through the, the database dozen. Because <laughs> anybody that's ever been to a Gap store knows every piece of clothing is methodically folded. Our store associates are amazing. <laughs> show up work, you know, wearing something like from J. Crew. do they send you home? They don't send you home, but people notice. <laughs> Which of your relatives has the best fashion sense? Oh, my sister. Who has the worst? My husband. On a scale of one to 10, how nervous do those mannequins make you? <laughs> <laughs> Does it bother you to get that gap is not an acronym for anything? Um, no. <laughs> Socks with sandals, yes or double yes? Never. If the fashion police were here, what would they charge me with? 
don't know. How many days do you leave clean laundry in the basket before you fold it? There's no expiration on clean laundry. How big of a ketchup stain is too big if I want to return a shirt? I'm asking for a friend. We have our policies. <laughs> when your house is cold, do you turn up the heat or do you add a gap sweater? Oh, I do both. That's it. Well, this has been great, Sally, to have you here. Um, if people want to know more about you, more about your team, more about The Gap, where would they go? Our website mm -hmm. is a great place to do it, but also just experience our stores, experience all of our brands. We have, you know, we run seven brands globally, well, maybe Banana Republic, and I think the best sense you get of who we are is to go and experience that with our store system. Well, it's been great to have Sally here. Thanks for watching The Ship Room. We'll see you on the next show. About you need the. To add a carrot. <laughs> you are right. So we're gonna go about and then the. <laughs> 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 <laughs>